when the discussion of African fighters comes up to UFC fans, most might first think of fighters such as Israel Adesanya, Kamara Usman, and maybe even the South African middleweight, Drakus Duplessis. But the main person that comes to mind, the one person that everyone recognizes, the true African fighter, Mike Perry. Good, my nigga. How you doing, What's brother? <laughs> Why you gotta be gay with it? This year, we best friends. Ah! Now, some people may be confused, and you might even ask, is this guy even African? And in short, the answer is no. Mike Perry wasn't born, raised, or even lived in Africa, but he does have one quality that makes him a true African fighter. I wanna explain that I took a DNA test and the results came back French and German, British and Irish, and I was 2% African. So I am legally allowed to say the word Now obviously that video has stirred up some controversy throughout Mike Perry's career, but it's one of the many that has led to an instant rise in popularity of the former UFC welterweight. But it didn't start here. To understand what made Mike Perry who he is today, we have to travel back to 2016 when he made his UFC debut against fellow welterweight Hyung Gyu Lim. This matchup would be on the main card of a massive pay-per-view that featured Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz 2 as the main event. This fight for Mike Perry would be an incredible opportunity for him to gain instant popularity with all the eyes watching. And not only did Mike Perry take advantage, but he passed with flying colors. He began by showing off his flashy personality with his weigh-in face-off. then proceeding to KO Lim in the first round after dropping him multiple times. This would be our African champ's first win and his first shining moment in the UFC. After this, our true African fighter would go on to have somewhat of a lackluster UFC career, but each fight would always be more memorable than the last, and he would always do something, even the bare minimum, but something to strike interest in the hearts of the UFC fans. However, even though our beloved real African champ has always provided excitement for his fights, he does have an unfortunate dark side that we have to discuss. After Mike Perry's loss to Jeff Neal at UFC 245, he and his current wife at the time Danielle Nickerson split up, claiming Perry had abused her verbally and physically, saying that after an altercation at a bar, Perry had taken her down and hit her several times when they arrived at home. Now, you might be thinking, why would our African champ do such a thing, and would he ever do such a thing? And to be honest with you, I don't know. I'll leave this one totally up to you to figure out on your own time and decide for yourself. Is this actually a true allegation? Still, this one instance wasn't the only time that Mike Perry has ever been in any sort of controversy. He had another controversial moment at the tail end of his career, actually in July of 2020, where he was actually shown on video arguing with strangers, people, yelling slurs and everything that you could possibly even think of, and eventually KOing one punch knocking out a dude out cold at a bar. Again, this was all shown on video. Now, I'm not here to argue that Mike Perry is a stand-up citizen and that he is a perfect person. And honestly, he wasn't the most outstanding person with these controversies. Even in the bar fight, 
the guy slightly asked for it because he wanted to step to our true African king, our true African god. He stepped to him and he got KO'd for it. So that's partially on him, but Perry would later be charged with an assault misdemeanor after the event. So our African king god did get some reparations suited to him for his this event. And honestly, this event more so went under the radar. There wasn't many people talking about this or really putting Mike Perry under a lot of heat or stress when these videos came out. It was more so of people defending him. There's plenty of comments on the YouTube video that's out right now. Basically people saying the guy kind of deserved it. So in all honesty, no one really ever associates any of these events with Mike Perry. He's kind of just our true African God King that gets away with stuff, which happened. And we do make mistakes in life and things do happen. Don't know if I can justify these actions as, oh, things just happen. But again, it has flown under the radar throughout Mike Perry's career. Most people think of his super engaging personality when it comes to him as a name in itself. But again, Mike Perry would eventually move on from these events and they don't get talked about as much today. Now, after these events, Mike Perry would continue to fight inside of the UFC. He would eventually beat Mickey Gall by unanimous decision, but unfortunately, this would be his last victory inside of the UFC. He would initially have a fight scheduled for former welterweight champion, Robbie Lawler, but he would later fall out due to injury, leaving Mike Perry to face Tim Means as his replacement. He would miss weight by four and a half pounds, weighing in 175 and a half, losing 30% of his purse that would go to Tim Means and then would eventually lose by unanimous decision against him as well. After that, he would then face off against Daniel Rodriguez at a UFC fight night on April 10th, 2021, and would also lose that by decision, marking the end of Mike Perry's UFC career. At this point, you may be wondering, how is Mike Perry this true Sigma African champion that I keep referring to him as? And it's not because of anything that he did inside of the UFC. It's more of his recent work in bare knuckle fighting championship where he's truly shined his elite African roots. Now he may not be the exact champion that I always call him, but he certainly is in a figurative sense. He has truly shined into his own, being 3-0 at bare knuckle, securing wins over Julian Lane, Michael Venom Page, also known as MVP, which is a really solid win, a really, really solid win, and former UFC middleweight champion, Luke Rockhold, which you may have seen all over Instagram with Luke Rockhold also being a solid name. And even after his victory against Luke Rockhold, he got to do an in-ring face-off with no one other than the notorious Conor McGregor shining a light on his stardom. Mike Perry is one of the few names of all time to ever succeed and maintain his fame outside of the UFC. He's made appearances on Theo Vaughn's podcast and recently appeared on the Joe Rogan podcast, which has not aired yet. Overall, the real true African champ has always risen, but he has never fallen. So hopefully you enjoyed that little documentary about our true African King, Mike Perry. Uh, he has been quite a controversial figure throughout the years, mainly people actually connecting with him. Even though he's very vocal about him and how he speaks, it's his personality that's really connected with a lot of combat sports fans in general. Mike Perry, even though he's flawed in, I mean, a lot of ways, don't get me wrong, he is one of the most entertaining, one of the most engaging personalities probably in combat sports history. Mike Perry is just an entertaining kind of guy and it almost sucks, man. I really want him to be in the UFC, even though he, he might not be the best and he's falling off of a cliff and he didn't really have much left in the UFC. I wish he would have resigned. I just wish that would have been a possibility and just kept watching a few more Mike Perry fights. But honestly, I'm, I'm happy for him. I really am. He's really succeeding 
outside of the UFC. And most people who leave the UFC don't really find success outside of it. They don't keep their name value. People don't really watch them. And Mike Perry has been able to maintain his audience, even fighting at bare knuckle, which is not a huge promotion, especially compared to the UFC. And that just tells you how special of a personality he is. The guy's just funny. The guy's just a completely hilarious fighter. And you can't not watch an interview that doesn't have Mike Perry in it. He's always engaging. And yeah, he has his issues again. He has not done the best things outside the octagon, especially in bar scenarios. But, you know, he's kind of, I would say, almost eliminated that. After having a kid, he's kind of straightened himself up and really focused on being a good father, which I can respect that even more. People always deserve second chances in life and people do make mistakes. Obviously, he's paid the price for it, for what he's done, and I can't really hold that against him too much. And I'm just... I'm so proud of Mike Perry, man. I, I, I really enjoy seeing him succeed at bare knuckle and fighting guys like MVP, who people thought he probably wasn't going to beat. MVP was that guy at Bellator. Like, he was a, a special dude. And he went out and, yeah, it was a close competitive fight but he came out and he pushed through in that sixth round because bare knuckle has some weird rules but he pushed through that sixth round to secure him that victory and he has that grit still he still has what it takes to be a great combat sports athlete and i respect him for that so mike perry if you happen to be watching this which he probably won't be i don't think many people will watch this anyways but keep doing your thing man i i, I love i love watching me some mike perry i really do i really do kind of a short documentary today i kind of wanted to get something out for friday at least and just do something with it you know i want to get some some video video ideas rolling through the brain going through so Mike Perry came up in my brain and I was like, let's do the true African fighter, Mike Perry, because he is truly African. Let's not be real. But Mike Perry is my guy. That's all I have for you guys today. Make sure you guys like and subscribe for more content like this. Hit that bell icon as well. I would truly appreciate it. But that's all I have for you guys today. Peace. <laughs>